Hello everyone, I'm Triple J, and there are just some things I'm really sick of seeing in fandoms. happen to be excuse making used by white fandom in order to hide their racism. It's gotten to a point where I just want to say, just be honest, you're a racist shithead who doesn't want to see black people or any other people of color in your video game, Disney film, or superhero movie. I've seen these excuses come up time and time again that fans hide behind for fear of being lumped in with the KKK because their thinking is so narrow that they believe racism only comes in white sheets and voting Republican. Now these are only a couple of excuses that I've seen, but I've seen these excuses come up a lot. Common excuse number one. Black people can't be in this movie, book, video game, Disney film because it's based in a Europe. Oh, that's right. I remember history class teaching me about the ice magic wielding queens, the flaming eyeballs set in towers, the dragons, the orcs, the goblins, the elves, and a European history class. Oh, wait, they didn't. Now, this excuse is nothing new, and it's been one I've seen come up time and time again within the Hobbit fandom, as, according to all accounts that I've read, there are no people of color within the first movie, and only a few in the second movie as background extras. I've also seen it come up during discussions about the Disney movie Frozen, where I've seen at least just two people of color in the background, and no one else. This idea of an entirely white field in Europe comes from a rather racist historic view that, well, black people didn't exist outside of Africa until the 17th century when a whole bunch of Europeans went there and enslaved them all. Because black people don't know how to build boats and go exploring by themselves. To say nothing of the other people of color within this whole planet. Now, something that I was a bit more personally involved with was a post on the Mary Sue, a feminist-minded geek website that was discussing someone's redesign of the old adventure PC game called Hero's Quest into Heroine's Quest. I left a comment that said, hey, this is nice, but it would have been nicer had there been more options for the lead character than a blonde-haired, blue-eyed, white woman. Cue the excuse that black people didn't exist in Europe back then. But there was also this other excuse. It's simply too difficult to program different colors into these old computers. Yes, it's also hard to program different colors into these computers we have these days, even when it's using a gameplay system that no one could ever possibly update and improve upon. Now, let me just point something out here, which is that the choices that go into casting and programming are deliberate. Whenever people make a character or write a character, the choices that they make are deliberate with regards to their appearance and what they are, be it their gender, their build, hair color, skin color, eye color. And more often than not, the choices that they make come out as straight, white, male, cisgendered, and able-bodied. Heck, I used to work as an extra when I was living in Vancouver last year. And whenever there was a casting call from the company that I worked for, I noted just how specific it could be. Everything from their body build to the type of clothes you wore to your skin color. They were very specific in what they wanted because that was the orders that they got from the production company that they were working for. In short, it's not accidental that a lot of the roles we see on TV and movies is still straight, white, and male. Here's another common excuse I've seen come up time and time again. We just need more time to introduce these characters. 
How much time? I've seen this excuse come up whenever people were discussing about how much they wanted a Black Panther movie already. Now apparently, there doesn't seem to be any time needed to introduce a character of color who is the side character, or who is not in the lead. But when it's a character of color who is in the lead, well, Marvel Studios just needs more time. No, they don't. Just make it. Give it the same time, money, love, and attention that was given to the other Marvel movies, and it'll make money. And in case you still want to use the same old tired excuse that Marvel Studios just needs more time to introduce any character that isn't a straight white man, let me give you an example of a Marvel movie that starred a black man and was a superhero movie. Guess which one it was? <laughs> Take a wild guess as to which superhero movie had three previous movies before it and nearly ended up killing superhero movies entirely. Hey, that's a pretty white cast there, isn't it? Not to mention that the Guardians of the Galaxy movie is coming out, and that has a walking talking alien tree and a walking talking gun toting raccoon. If you can get behind that, then you've got no excuse to hide behind as to why they should not make a Black Panther movie, let alone a movie about any of the other heroes of color within Marvel. I'm talking about Luke Cage, aka Power Man, the Daughters of the Dragon. Oh, Storm certainly deserves her own movie, as well as War Machine. In conclusion, these excuses are nothing more than a paltry cover-up for white fandom's racism. And it honestly wouldn't surprise me if such attitudes and excuses were held by the higher-ups in movie studios. I'm Triple J, and sadly, that's not all there is to say about this. Take care.